half man, half machine, Phil's brother Jack, David Bradley, star of American Ninja 3 and 4, a tough street fighter, teams up with a beautiful journalist, Kate. Oh, I forgot about Kate. She's beautiful. She's stunning. She gets naked. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to DVDs, Nuts, and Popcorn. I am your host, the PWM, the physical media Mac. And I am back with another box full of Laserdisc and DVD Blu-ray goodness. Greatness, I should say. And, um, yeah, welcome back to a weekly video that we do on this channel where we talk about our movie pickups movie purchases and we talk a little bit about the movies now i did a review i want you guys to check out if you have not seen yet on the end screen you will see a box click on that box for the cyborg 2 review and check that video out support that video if you'd be so kindly now speaking of cyborg 2 let's go ahead and start off there but since i did a review of it on this channel, which is really my first official movie re review, because we just talk about movies. We don't really review movies on this channel, but I had a reason to review this movie, and uh, so I'm not going to talk about it now, but I do request that you guys go check out that uh, separate video on this. Cyborg 2, direct sequel to the uh, original cult classic Claude Van Damme vehicle Cyborg, who came out in 1989. This film launched in November 24th of 1993. I absolutely adore this film. This is the Japanese um, edition, by the way, guys. Uh, for you hunters out there, or not hunters, but you uh, collectors out there, or, or movie hunters, this is a trick I learned a while back. Laserdisc from Japan, a lot of the times, are in American language, or in, uh, the, the audio is in English, and they'll just have Japanese subtitles. And if you're watching a widescreen movie like this, uh, where you have the bar bar at the top and the bar at the bottom, you see those uh, subtitles at the bottom uh, across the bar screen. So it doesn't even infringe upon the movie at all. So I absolutely love it. And why I mention that is a lot of the times you can find movies that you otherwise would not be able to find for American release. And also, sometimes you can get a lot better deals on some of the rarer, out-of-print American stuff. You can buy the Japanese for a lot cheaper price. So just a little bit of a, uh, not advice, but a little bit of a, um, what am I trying to say? Knowledge. I'm dropping some effing knowledge for you guys. But yeah, again, not going to talk about this. Go, go over there and check out my review. It's only got like... 50 something reviews let's get that to 100 and uh thanks by the way guys i'm at 410 subscribers i'm almost to my 500 goal that way i can have a community page and post stuff on a daily basis as far as movies i'm watching and whatnot all right now i was going to try to do it but it's way too hot so sorry about the noise guys but i'm turning my car on Stop it. Stop making that noise. Thank you. <laughs> All right, now. Oh, God. Don't tell me my work is calling me. Hold on one second, guys. I got to take this call. Sorry about that interruption, guys. It happens to the best of us, you know. What can I say? I'm kind of an important guy over here. I think we'll just discuss all the lasers before we move on to the DVDs and Blu-rays. All right, what next here? All right, let's go to Cyborg Cop. Now, speaking of Laserdisc, 
I don't believe this has a an American DVD release. That's why I picked it up on Laserdisc, guys. Now, you guys heard me talk about in the last couple of videos, we've been talking about the Cyborg Cop series. Uh, we talked about part two and part three. Now, David Bradley is in part one and two, and then a different cast of characters is in part three, which we'll talk about that'll, that'll help us nicely transition into the next movie, Project uh, Shadow Chaser 3000. Now, so I watched this series backwards, but it doesn't really matter because none of them are really connected through any kind of true continuity. But uh, yeah, this is a David Bradley vehicle here. Uh, he was in the American Ninja movies. There's been a ton of movies, but that really wasn't his franchise. I would say this is definitely his franchise, even though he wasn't in part three. Now, David Bradley's a badass. We've already talked about that. This was directed by David, or I'm sorry, Sam Furstenberg. And Sam Furstenberg directed the American Ninja movies, or some of them, and uh, or the, I think, at least part one, maybe two. And then also, uh, Sam, or yeah, Sam Furstenberg directed part two of the Cyborg Cop movies. And then someone different uh, did part three. Now, this is a 1993 American direct to video sci fi action film as previously mentioned, starring David Bradley, but also starring John Rhys Davies, which, uh, if you don't know who that is, he's probably most famous for being in the Lord of the Rings trilogy, and also in um, the Indiana Jones movies as well. Now, basically, in this movie, by the way, this is funny, me and Tyler were actually talking about this uh, recently, three cyborg cop movies and there's not one cyborg cop in any of these fucking movies it's absolutely hilarious but uh, it is what it is guys now basically the premise of this movie is his uh david bradley's character's brother is in the military he goes off to do some military um uh, he has a military well, what am i trying to say here he has a military covert operation in uh i believe it's in the caribbean and this guy they're, they're going up against this guy uh trying to take him out and he's like this leader and he's trying to build a cyborg army and uh his brother gets captured and eventually turned into a cyborg which is which is pretty uh crazy and uh so I believe his name is Jack, uh, David Bradley's character in this is, uh, yeah, his name is Jack. He basically has to go in and uh, stop this guy from creating this cyborg army, destroy the cyborg, save his brother, and take out John Rye's uh, Davies character. Now, this movie has more kicks, more punches, more explosions, more cyborgs, more fanny packs fucking awesome. It's badass. It's Cyborg Cop 1 with David Bradley. And how can you fucking miss? Let me see if I even gave that any justice here. The future technology of tomorrow is here today in Cyborg Cop. An explosive sci-fi thriller in the tradition of Universal Soldier during an undercover raid in Haiti. Oh, it was actually in Haiti. Well, that is the Caribbean, isn't it? I don't know. Vice Cop Phil Ryan is mortally wounded by a strange, unstoppable soldier. Ryan is captured and taken to the high-tech laboratory of Kessel. That's John Rice Davies' character. An evil industrialist who yearns to build an army of assassin cyborgs. Half man, half machine. Phil's brother Jack, David Bradley, star of American Ninja 3 and 4, a tough street fighter, teams up with a beautiful journalist, Kate. Oh, I forgot about Kate. She's beautiful. She's stunning. She gets naked. To break into Kessel's compound and put an end to the evil operation. But Kessel has his instructable cyborgs and his secret high-tech arsenal. Does Jack have the power to defend himself against Cyborg Cop? 
Yeah, man, this movie is uh, it's pretty badass. Born of flesh, turned to steel, cyborg cop. I love it. Absolutely love it. And by the way, I was talking to Tyler about this as well. I've been on a, a one hell of a streak as far as selecting movies that have trilogies and all of them being badass. The Cyborg Cop movies, all badass. The Enter the Ninja trilogy, all badass. And then we have Cyborg. Everybody knows the first Cyborg's badass. Cyborg 2 was badass. All I need is Cyborg 3 to be badass and I'll, that trilogy will be successful. And uh, which... Let's talk about the next one. Now, this is not a trilogy. It's a quadrilogy, but uh, we're off to at least a good start, I would say. Kind of. All right, now, we have on Laserdisc, Project Shadow Chaser 3000. Now, a lot of these B-action movies are very confusing. It's hard to figure out what the fuck is part one, two, three. They bounce around, they have different names. And this is no exception to the role here. This ended up being part three, right? I thought it was part one. I wanted to start in the beginning of the franchise. And I bought part three on accident because the stupid movie's called Project Shadow Chaser 3000. Were there 2,990 something movies before this one or only two movies? very confusing but um so I made a mistake but I still decided to watch the film because with a lot of these uh cheesy action films sci-fi films a lot of them the continuity is very uh lackadaisical or there is none basically all right so okay so this movie came out in 1995 it's also called the edge of darkness here we go again with different names Okay, so speaking of Cyborg Cop 3, which did not have David Bradley in it, we were introduced to a new character called Frank Zagarino, or a new actor, and so I wanted to find out what other movies he's done because I liked him in Cyborg Cop 3, and this is his vehicle right here. I believe he's in all, of, all four of the uh, Project Shadow Chaser movies, and... Um, yeah, also we have Christopher Atkins in this movie. Everybody knows him from Blue Lagoon. Now, we were talking about Cyborg, uh, not Cyborg Cop, it gets confusing. These Cyborg movies, I'm, they're coming out of my ears at this point. Cyborg 2, we were, we're discussing with Angelina Jolie being 17 years old and how controversial that was. That has nothing on the movie that he was first in, Christopher Atkins. He's most w well known for Blue Lagoon or The Blue Lagoon with Brooke Shields. Uh, do some research on that. It's quite shocking. And not even that before The Blue Lagoon. I don't even want to talk about it. There's even more shocking shit um, about her that's just like, you wouldn't even believe it. But anyway, um, so yeah, he's most known for that. He looks like the guy from American, uh, American Greatest Hero. Like, I... Is he an American guy? I don't think he is. I think he just looks like the guy. But anyway, also in this movie is a uh, a very sexy, although they did not show her sex appeal really all in the movie besides her beautiful accent, her South African accent. Uh, Musetta Vander, if you, or no, Vander, Musetta Vander, if you do not know who that is, she's a South African actress who played as Sendell in Mortal Kombat Annihilation. I believe I own that on Laserdisc, by the way, guys. Now, this was directed by John Eries, and uh, I really can't find too much more information on him. I think he directed the first three of these movies, and someone else directed four, and I, I honestly don't know what else he's done. Now, let me see here. Now, I could see someone saying this is a bad film and I'm not going to argue that it definitely is one of those it's so fucking bad that it's pretty damn good I mean I you know 
as bad as parts of it are, I was pretty fucking entertained by it. Now, it does drag a little bit. I will uh, be honest about that, and I could be, you know, uh, constructive about that. But um, you can tell that they put a lot of uh, uh, blood, sweat, and tears into making this movie. I mean, they're on a spacecraft for fucking 90 minutes, and they have next to nothing budget. And I think it was done pretty fucking good. I mean, it looks... Uh, 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 a whole lot fucking better than Jason X uh, spacecraft. I'm telling you that right now. But, um, yeah, I mean, I thought the set design was pretty good in this movie. And the exterior shots in space, where you're looking at the spacecraft and the, the planets, I thought that looked pretty fucking badass. I mean, this is no Star Wars, guys. Um, but uh, I thought the, the the special effects were pretty good. Some of them were really cheesy, but I thought they were they were they were really fun. Now, this has what which I I love this. It has those um, blue electrical effects that you see. I always like the first time I ever saw them. I think it was in Weird Science, where it's like blue electricity in the air. So there's a lot of that in this movie. But that's in a lot of action movies. It always adds to it. I just love it. I adore those those special effects i think it should be in all fucking movies I, I just really like it but um what else here yeah man i um it, it's really strange because uh let's just call him zags it's got i want to say zagarino every time but zags character is the android in all the movies of the cyborg is there a difference between a cyborg and an android i, I don't know but um let's just say cyborg right and um, he, he, the first hour of this movie, he's nowhere to be found. It's fucking like a head scratching. But all of a sudden he shows up and it gets a, a lot better in my opinion because you want him to be in the fucking movie. But the, the, the choice to not have him in the first hour of the movie was just bizarre to me. And, um, but I thought the, you know, the acting was fine. It's, it's, uh. Again, people are going to say this movie's horrible. I got some enjoyment out of it. Now, what I really want to see, I definitely want to see the whole franchise, although I'm, he I'm hearing four is bad. Um, but one has the white sensei from Karate Kid, the bad guy, in it. And he's actually the good guy in the movie. He's the protagonist. So, uh, and as old Zags here is the antagonist, Cyborg. But yeah, man, I thought it was cool, man. A cool little, cool little flick. And I'm hooked now. I gotta see all the movies. Deep in space, something has gone terribly wrong. <laughs> I don't know, man. It is kind. Of, it is. It's very fucking cheesy. It's like he's a cyborg, but all of a sudden now he has the power. Like from what I'm hearing. He was just a straight cyborg in the other films, but now somehow he can shape shift into different people. It's very fucking odd. It's hilarious, man. Go check it out. Project uh, Shadow Chaser 3000. For years, man's deadliest enemy has been lost in space. Zagarino don't get lost in space. Space gets lost in Zagarino. See how I did that little Chuck Norris deal? All right, a little sip of coffee here, a little diesel fuel to keep me going. Feeling good here, guys. I could talk for hours. Now we're gonna try to shore this up. I don't have a lot this week kind of went overboard on those lasers all right so i told you guys i was going to check this movie out spawn i've never seen it before this is a film from 1997 it was directed by a guy named mark a z depay i'm gonna say or dippy i'm gonna say it's depay he must be french or something which by the way he's also a visual effects guy and that's probably the strong point and the weak point of this movie, but I would say mostly the strong point. Let's talk about that. Uh, this stars Michael Jai White as Spawn. 
It also stars John Leguizamo, and I always love him in movies. Man, he's a really good actor. And also Martin Sheen, which um, you need. I need more Martin Sheen in my movies, man. He always does an excellent job. Obviously, Charlie Sheen, Emilio Estevez's dad, and uh, just a phenomenal human being as an actor. All right, now, yeah, man, this movie, you know, listen, guys, without saying too much about it, I, I enjoyed the movie. I'm not a super fucking comic book type of guy. I've mentioned that a thousand times on this channel, but I enjoyed it for what it was. I thought it was a little bit too comical for my taste. John Leguizamo's character, I don't know what his name is in the movie, is kind of a mixture between... The Joker and Penguin. And if you've seen the movie, you, you know what I'm talking about. Um, he's a little bit too much on the comic side. But, uh, you know, I don't know. That's the direction they chose to go with it. I would have uh, preferred this movie be a lot more darker. But basically what happens in this movie, Martin Sheen character has designed this, uh, this virus that could kill the entire world. So I guess he's gonna make some demands at some point. If people do not come aboard, then he's gonna release this virus or whatever. Now at first, Michael Jai White's character works for him. He's a regular human being. And um, he double crosses him and ends up killing him, burning him to, to death. And he, ends up, he sprays them with some kind of chemical. Maybe it's the chemical that's gonna destroy the world. I didn't really get that part, but then he sets him on fire. Somehow, Spawn enters a tunnel into hell and gets involved with John Leguizamo's character and the devil. Now, the devil is the part of the movie that where the special effects are not very fucking good. It absolutely looks ridiculous, in my opinion. It kind of looks like a Sega CD game, if you know what I'm talking about. And, uh, but other than that, man, I liked a lot of the special effects in this movie. But, but before I get to that, so the devil basically says, if you want to see your wife again, if you want to get her back again, you need to lead my army to take over the world. And Spawn has to agree or disagree. He agrees. So now he's basically signed his soul away to the devil. And then he returns to earth and, uh, but he's all, he's burned up and, he finally ends up learning how to, uh, he starts turning into the Spawn character and he has to learn his abilities throughout the movie. And basically it's a revenge flick where he's going after Martin Sheen's character and uh, whatnot. Now, I think that the cape effects in this movie are fucking just eyeball, mouth dropping. They're, they're just like, they look incredible, man. Uh, really like how the cape design is. I don't know how uh, it is in the comic book or whatever, but the, the cape is an actual weapon. The cape is a, a protector. It's a barrier. But it just the way the cape flows is real smooth in this movie. It just looks really cool. Kind of reminds me of Castlevania Symphony of the Night, uh, the way it flows. But it's a lot bigger than that. And uh, it's really impressive looking, man. But again, this uh, director is a visual effects guy, and he made it look really good cool and all the other uh just spawn in general i think he looks fantastic but um yeah man obviously a todd mcfarlane uh, property spawn but yeah i'm interested to see what you guys think about this movie because when i talked about it in the video saying i was going to see it no one commented no one told me whether they liked it or not so Am I the only one that thought it was pretty good? It begs the question. All right, now. Let's get into this. Now, I don't know. I bought this as a present for Ty Lord, a.k.a. Uh, Ty Lordikoff, a.k.a. Ty Borg 4. Speaking of Ty Lord, I can't remember if I mentioned the beginning of this video. The review that I told you guys to go check out, he actually helps me out on that and plays a character in that video. So definitely go check that out. 
and check out Ty Lord's uh, performance. Now, Ty Lord told me about this movie. Now, speaking of trilogies, although that's a quadrilogy, quadrilogy as well, Nemesis is the reason why I know about uh, Oliver Gruner. Now, he's a badass from, uh, where is he from? He's from, uh, I think, Denmark, if I remember correctly. But he's a badass martial artist and stuff. And um, he, I, I absolutely love the first Nemesis, man. It's one of my favorite post-apocalyptic movies of all times. And he kicks ass in this movie. So Tyler was mentioning this movie right here and saying that it had no American releases. So I started looking on eBay and Amazon to see if I could find one. And I thought that I did, but I am uncertain at this point. So I purchased this. This wasn't super cheap. I had to pay a little bit of money for this. And I'm highly pissed off right now. I don't know if you guys remember when I bought uh, Pray for Death, which is the Shokasugi uh, movie. It had fake artwork and the disc looked very suspect. The artwork on the disc looked very suspect as well. But the movie looked and sounded great. This is supposed to be brand new. This is a reseal job, I can tell, just by knowing the business. And the artwork, you can tell, is color-printed artwork, once again, and it does not even fit the DVD case, so it's quite obvious to any amateur collector that this is bullshit. Now, is this, is this just par for course when it comes to buying... American releases that weren't released in America? Do you have to go to these links to get movies that you can watch in English? I don't know. I don't know. So I, I'm, I'm thinking that I got fucked on this one. So I need to talk to Tyler to see what he wants to do. If he wants me to open it and watch it and see if it looks good and then send it to him... I can do that, or if he just wants me to keep it sealed and send it to him, I can do that, or I can just return it. I'm going to complain. I'm going to see if I can get some money back on it, but I want to see what he says. Does he want this as a gift still or not? So let me know, because now I messaged the guy before I bought it, and I said, is this in, uh, is this in English, and he said, yes. So looking at the back of it, there's no indication that this is in English. But it is written in English. Anyway, so... Um, let's see here. An encounter with a corrupt Texas uh, land owner and the death of his best friend turned Joseph Claremont, which is Ol uh, uh, Olivier... Gr Olivier. Olivier. Maybe that's like the French way to say his name. I thought it was Oliver Gruner, but it says uh, Oliver Gruner of Nemesis, like we mentioned, into a bare knuckling killing machine. He is forced to deliver a new style of justice to the Wild West with the only weapon he needs, his lethal fist. So this is like a Western kickboxer movie. But again, guys, I don't know, man. That's some bootleg shit if I've ever seen it. And is there any way to get this movie in English that's not bootleg? It would be probably the question I need to ask. Did I even say the name of the movie? Sabate? All right, so, yeah, a little bit disappointed in that, to say the least. All right, speaking of Oliver Gruner, now, again, massive fan of the first Nemesis. So when I found out that there were Blu-ray love for the, well, first of all, I found out that there's three more films in the franchise that I had no clue about, and then I find out that all three of them are on Blu-ray together in this triple feature, I was 
sky high, guys. Absolutely sky high until I saw the first movie and then I was like, what the fuck? Yeah, guys, so I finally watched, or not finally, but I watched Nemesis 2. And by the way, Albert, Albert Pune, which is kind of like the when you're little kids when you made the pune, 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 like the laser noise, pune. Oliver, oh, not Oliver, Oliver, I'm thinking of uh, Gruner again. Albert Pune is a really good uh, B movie director. He directed Nemesis. And he, I was happy to find out that he directed all three of these movies. But I was not very happy about part two. So this girl right here, I can't think of the, her name off the top of my head. But um, she won like Miss Olympia. So she's a bodybuilder. And she's an absolute badass. I mean, she is a fucking... Like, in this movie, like, she has a, a man fucking build. Like, I've never seen, I don't think I've ever seen a woman with this type of build before. It's pretty impressive. But, um, even Albert Pune, he's on a documentary, or he does a commentary, a 30-minute commentary over uh, shots of the movie that I watched, like, 15 minutes of it before I put in the first film, and by the way, the first film is called Nemesis 2 Nebula, and uh, even he's kind of talking down on her, saying, that, well, she was a tough girl, she gave it her best shot, but it really didn't work out, it, that's kind of what I got from what he was saying, um, you know, extrapolating a little bit from that, but I mean, it did not sound like he was uh, giving her, her props at all. So that's how I went into the movie. I went into the movie kind of like, oh shit, she might have not done a good job at all. She is way too big in this movie. Like, uh, you know, he also said on that commentary that she didn't move swift enough because she was too fucking cock diesel. And uh, yeah, no doubt, man. When she's running, she's like, like a, like a, literally like Christian Okoya. She's like a fullback, man. She is big as shit. And, um, she just trots her way through the film or trods her way through the film. And, um, I don't know, man. I, you know, I think that he put, put all his, uh, eggs in one basket behind her performance and, uh, it was going to make her break the film. And I just feel like, you know, it wasn't the best, uh, choice of, uh, antagonist maybe. Maybe I'm being too hard on her. Uh, you know, I thought she was pretty cool. I just, uh, I don't know, man. But but anyway, all of that being said, I was shocked to find out that she is in part three and in part four. It's like, I don't even understand. Like, as you as you guys can, can probably surmise, I, I wasn't a really a, a big fan of... Uh, of Nemesis 2 uh, Nebula. So I really kind of wanted her, no offense to her, I wanted her to go away and then to to Albert to reinvent the uh, the franchise and come with something new in, two, or, or in 3 and 4. I guess he didn't do that. Yeah, she's in all fucking uh, three of the movies. So I'm hoping that, that they get better, guys. It's only, they can only get better from here. I hope, man. It, it's, it's not looking good, though. Um... But anyway, so it's weird. It's like Nemesis 2, it's basically like a Predator ripoff. And uh, Nebula is this Predator-looking creature. They never really discuss in the movie if he's a cyborg. Is he a man wearing a suit? Is he a monster inside the suit? Is he a monster or a creature in general? Um, but he's this blurry-looking fucker the whole movie. And I don't know if this... this this effect, this blur effect, because you can't see him, he's just like blurry in the movie, I don't know if that's some kind of camouflage effect, it's some kind of uh, weapon of, of his or what not, but it seems to me later on in the film, towards the end of the film, in the last chapter, he gets hurt, and then you don't see this blurry effect anymore, and you can actually see what he looks like. And I love it from that point, but it's only like 
10 minutes of the fucking movie. So if they would have shown him the whole movie, I think the movie would have stood a chance, but they decided to do this stupid blurry effect on the, uh, that, the, the nebula creature, and it really took a lot from the movie. Her performance in the blurry nebula creature uh, really gave the movie no chance. But, um, you know, it had some cool stuff going on. It had some uh, explosions and, uh, you know, some um, post-apocalyptic uh, stuff in there that you see in a lot of post-apocalyptic movies. I don't hate the film, guys. I just, uh, I, I was wishing for more from, uh, from Nemesis 2. Sue Price is the name of the the Olympian. And his idea was to get her and put her in front of a screen. He thought that people would just adore her and love her because she was like this super athlete female. But um, I don't think it worked out the way he thought it would. It says, Alex, a genetically altered female with the secret key to destroy the cyborgs, is transported back in time in an effort to protect her from grave danger. But Alex isn't safe for long when a cyborg bounty hunter named Nebula uh, eventually locates the young woman and targets her for termination. I'm not going to get into the story of this, guys. It's very convoluted. And I'm out of breath, basically. This movie's running, or this video's running a lot longer. You know me, guys. I just start talking, and it just goes on forever. I picked this up at Goodwill. This is not normally the type of movie that I would pick up, to be honest with you. But I don't know, man. I'm a real big fan of Robert Shaw ever since the Jaws movie. And uh, I kind of want to see other movies with him in it. And this is a younger Robert Shaw. It's called Black Sunday. And it's a terrorist film. It says, Black Sunday is a powerful story of the Black September terrorist group attempting to blow up a Goodyear blimp hovering over the Super Bowl stadium with 80,000 people and the President of the, of the United States in attendance. Robert Shaw plays an Israeli commando who discovers the plot. Masterminded by Martha Keller, with the help of a deranged Vietnam Vietnam veteran, Bruce Dern. So Bruce Dern is also in this. And I know nothing about whether it's good or not. Comes with the paperwork. And yeah, I mean, I mean his over-the-top performance in Jaws, man, just really captivated... Uh, Everybody, man, that watched the film. So I uh, kind of want to see what kind of acting chops he has in different movies. And I've never heard of this. Black Sunday. All right, next up here. This is a multi-feature here. I only think I saw, I think I saw like one of these on eBay. It was selling for like 20 bucks. So for two bucks, I picked this up at Goodwill. I've only watched one of the films. It's called Borderland. And I remember Borderland being pretty good. It's like a uh, road trip horror film. And um, on the eve of their graduation, three Texas University students travel to a Mexican border town and fall prey to an ancient cult hell-bent on finding candidates for human sacrifice. So any Mexican cult films with human sacrifice... I'm usually on board with the guys. We have another film called Dark Ride. And then we have a film called Unearthed. And then The Grave Dancers. I know nothing about any of those movies. And look, it looks like it looks like all these movies are 2000 and on films. What I do like about this after Dark Horror Fest is every single movie has its own disc and they all have color artwork on them. So it's nicely put together, nice presentation. I like the red. And uh, yeah, hopefully a cool multi-feature. I'll let you guys know when I check out the other films. I don't know why I feel bad talking about Nemesis 
two like that. I, I don't know why. I just, uh, I don't know. It just wasn't what I thought it was going to be. You can't like them all, guys. You can't like them all. All right. Quite possibly the most fascinating movie of all these. This is a rare out-of-print edition here. I think it sells for like $60. Found this at a pawn shop. Paid like two or three bucks for it. We talked about this, I think, in my last video. But I told you guys I was going to check it out and watch the movie. And I have watched the movie. And uh, I think this movie came out in 1980. The big deal in this movie is it's got Bruce Campbell in it. And no one that I've ever known in my life has ever even heard of this fucking movie. So it's a bizarre and unique film. And uh, I don't know, it just boggles the mind that I've never heard of it. And basically, basically to break down this movie... It's got NASA in the movie. Like, every, you know, the the, uh, the, the the astronauts have NASA on their clothes. So it represents NASA. And um, NASA makes this alien discovery. I think they're just uh, orbiting the moon at the time. They haven't landed on the moon. And uh, Bruce and his partner, whatever Bruce Campbell's character's name is, uh, Bruce, I'll just say Bruce. Bruce and his partner in the movie... They go back to Earth while NASA puts together a plan on uh, uh, going to the moon and landing on the moon and, and, and exploring what's going on there. Now, there's this great scene that you guys have to check it out. It'd be hard for me to, to even uh, do it justice by talking about it, where Bruce Campbell's at a strip club and uh, his astronaut partner, he calls him, he's all drunk and stuff. And he tells him he's got this great news for him. He finds out, like, through uh, through certain sources that they're going to be sent back and they're going to get to land on the moon and get to explore this, uh, presume of, uh, this alien race, right? So, I don't know. It's like Bruce Campbell at his finest. Like, you... You know why to this day he's like in his what sixties or whatever, and people are still paying out the 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 wazoo for autographs and going to see him at all these uh, you know um, you you just know why people love him so much. It's one of those scenes where you're like, man, his personality just fucking just is so cool, and uh, he's talking about how they're gonna go to space and he's doing these impersonations and. Uh, He's using a beer bottle and acting like it's a rocket going into space. And it's just, that it's really a cool scene. Go check out the movie, man. I know, um, hopefully you can find it like on a streaming service and whatnot. But, um, so anyway, they go back to space and they land on the moon. And, uh, what happens is, suppose, so what occurs is this alien cyborg race and it took me a while to even understand that this is a this is actually a cyborg movie but it's weird because it's like reverse cyborg you know normally humans are turned into you know uh robots right or robotic uh creatures are given you know robotic qualities and stuff but this is like reverse the the alien race are robots but they use humans as body parts it, it's very fucking bizarre but anyway this alien cyborg race has apparently been stranded on the moon for 14,000 years because their spacecraft uh their spacecraft fuck their spacecraft not crashed but it uh it broke down on the moon so they've been waiting for someone to come there so they can get the fuck off the moon. And here comes Bruce Campbell and his partner. They land. And what's, which is crazy about it, they end up taking whatever that vehicle is that lands on, like, so you land like a, uh, I think it's called, uh, it's like some kind of lunar, um, device or lunar lander. I think that's what it's called. They steal the lunar lander and use that as parts to repair their ship. So they can get the fuck on out of there. But they have built like a colony there, a, a space station on the moon. So they're exploring that. And um, 
It's a uh, it, it's so hard to explain. You really need to see this movie for 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 me to do it justice. But it's like it's almost like the movie is ahead of its time, but at the same in the same breath, it's not ahead of its time. It's the opposite because some of the stuff is so bad. Some of the some of the uh, special effects are so bad and dated. I don't know. It's hard to explain, but um, there is one scene in the movie where I literally spit. I was eating food during the movie, and I spit food. I spit steak across the room, and I'll just go ahead and spoil it, where Bruce Campbell's character is killed by one of the aliens, and his partner in this girl that they fought, they find there who's been put, I, I don't know, in cryo-freeze or some shit, they wake her up from cryo-freeze build this space tent and they fuck, like right after Bruce Campbell dies, which makes no sense at all and then all of a sudden through the window of this space tent they, they, they reveal the window and Bruce Campbell's face is there and now he's like an, a, a cyborg, and the look on his face is the most hilarious fucking thing I've ever seen. It absolutely makes it, it puts this movie from fucking here all the way up to here for me, man. And um, I don't know, it's such a bizarre oddity of a movie that I gotta say, it's so bad that it's fucking awesome. I absolutely. I can't believe I'm saying this. I really like this fucking film, man. It is a trip. All right, guys, that's it, man. I am out of breath. I said too much. And, uh, yeah. Thanks for checking out the video. I'm the PWM, the physical media Mac. I will check you guys out in the next video. Good luck out there finding whatever physical media that you're looking for. And I'm out.